Hello everybody, and welcome to my YouTube channel. This should be my very first official video that is not a YouTube short. I will be having mostly unedited video going on in the background. Here on the screen, you'll be seeing me put on the first paint that we have, which is Abyss Blue from the Two Thin Coats Paint Range by Duncan Rhodes Painting Academy, which I will be reviewing most of. Uh, some of them are washes and whatnots, metallics, and I won't be reviewing those today, but if you guys would like me to review those, then uh, just say down in the comments and I'll get right on that for you guys. Anyways, to uh, start it off here, we have a pretty nice deep blue. I really, really like the blues from this second wave. I have both waves, but the blues and a couple of the greens are pretty good. The pinks and reds, as you'll see, they're kind of iffy. Not as good as wave one, but I'm sure they'll have their places. It does look like nothing's really going on in the video. It looks like the pigment is very light and I think that was mostly due to me not knowing what to do with this paint range and watering it down a little bit too much, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem for later coats. I do a second coat uh, at the beginning of this video. I don't show me recording any of the other second coats, mostly because it just felt like a waste of time. And I have pictures uh, at the end of every single video to showcase what it looks like with the finished product of around two to three coats. I know it's two thin coats paint range, but three coats was sometimes needed. Mostly due to my lack of skills, I guess you could say. I'm a very intermediate painter at this point in time. I have painted a couple things decently well, but I'm still learning. I am very much like some of you out there and a lot worse than a lot of you out there. But I hope you stay and enjoy the rest of my channel. So on screen, you should be seeing me put on the first coat of the next paint, which is Witching Hour Blue. And I absolutely loved this paint. It It's probably my second or third favorite paint in this entire wave. And it just goes on beautifully, as you can see on screen, and covers very well too. It's It's got a great finish, and it, I just see so many possibilities for this kind of blue. And here in a second, you'll see the uh, finished product. It was uh, real fun working with this paint. Now we move on to Leviathan Blue. This was an okay paint. Uh, I liked the coverage on it, and it was it works as a good highlight. These paints are meant to be done in trifectas. Uh, and from what I've worked with on the Wave 1, they do that very well. I don't think they're perfect trifectas, but they get the job done for sure. They make doing highlights on reds and blacks very nice because instead of taking a red and adding white, you can use the trifecta and you won't have the problem of reds turning into pinks. And here you can see the finished product there. In a second, it'll go to the next paints which should be the turquoises. And these were absolutely beautiful. These, this entire line was my favorite in the whole range. You can see it goes on very well. And I just absolutely enjoyed working with these paints. Uh, if you wanted to know what model we're painting here, it's actually just one of the test prints. I do own a 3D printer. I really enjoy 3D printing. And this is one of the test models to calibrate the 3D printer and I had them lying around and I figured eh, these might work pretty well as test models and I, I saw the spirals and I was like I could paint each one of these a color and then go over with the, the lighter colors to show how it builds up on each paint because that's how you're going to use these most of the time is doing with the darker tones and then applying the lighter tones on top. I do think next time I will switch from white or from black to white because the the black didn't really feel like I, I got the full range of how the colors are supposed to work. Now we're going on to Cursed Blue, which I adored. I, th I think it might be my favorite paint 
I'm not sure if it was this one or the one before, which was my favorite. And these these blues just blew me away. <laughs> it's pun intended. It, they were absolutely wonderful. Everything about them, they cover well, they look so vibrant and bright. I I absolutely adore these blues. I, when I bought the range, I wasn't expecting to absolutely love these blues, but now I just, I wanna paint capes, I wanna paint everything with them. These blues, fantastic. And in a little bit, we'll go on to the greens, and then there's like these gray greens, and a deep red and a lighter pink, which we'll finish off with the video. Overall, I'd say the whole range is actually really good. I, I highly enjoyed wave one, and wave two is looking very nice indeed. But it, it was just the blues that really caught my eye this time around. And here you see the end product of two coats. As you can see, it's vibrant. I love this color. It's so, uh, it just pops. I just, I really, I, I can't say it enough. There you see me messing up, but uh, I start to put on the final coat, or final coat, the final one, which is Ray Gun Glow. This one was really nice. Uh, I enjoyed the, vibrant poppiness of it. I feel like I'm going to be saying a lot of these buzzwords over and over because uh, I don't know how else to fill the time. <laughs> but this video is just meant to be me rambling, introducing myself, and I don't expect a lot from this video. I will have all of the paints included on screen just for reference and so I don't have to sit here and keep telling you what each paint will be. It's a lot easier to do it that way. Here in a minute, we will move on to the greens, which I also highly enjoyed from this paint range. The standouts from this entire range, I will say, are the blues and the greens. Maybe it's just a personal thing, but I, I didn't love the reds and pinks. The pinks are needed as wave one didn't have too much of anything like that, but the reds didn't feel anything too special. I feel like you could have gotten similar colors with the previous paint range, but it is what it is. I will say this paint range might not be the best for absolute beginners, but anyone from an intermediate to experience will highly enjoy these paints. I might sound like I'm fanboying a little bit, but that's probably due to the fact that I, I absolutely love everything in the first wave. And the second wave, 95% of the paints I enjoy. There are a couple of fun things to play with. There are a couple glazes in the second wave. And there's a really good verdigree and some other wonderful things to play with. I really enjoy this entire Duncan Rhodes experience. I used to use Vallejo paints and they're absolutely wonderful. Don't get me wrong, I love Vallejo too. But ever since switching to these Duncan Road paints, I have fallen in absolute love. There are a couple other things that should be noted. They don't hold their consistency very well on the wet palette, and that might be due to my own fault. I'm not sure. They they separate a lot faster than some other paints. And again, I could be because they're still getting the formula down or something on my end. I'm not entirely sure, but it is something to look out for. So here we have our first screen and it went on very dark. Again, I think this is mostly due to me using a black primer and not white. So for any future videos, I'll probably use white in reviews. I will review wave one if you guys ask for it, obviously. Here we have the next screen, which also another lovely color. I really enjoyed this one. The upcoming last green, probably my favorite out of the greens. Like, it, it, they're all blue greeny, so it's hard to tell at this point. Oh, speaking of the previous paint range, I did put some of them through an airbrush and they did beautifully. In fact, I almost prefer putting them through the airbrush than painting them onto the paintbrush. They, you thin them down pretty well and they just go so smoothly. I did not put any of these ones through an airbrush, but I assume that they'll do the exact same sort of work. They do come with little mixing balls on the inside and I've actually noticed with the second wave, I think the mixing balls are a little bit bigger. 
I, I'm not entirely sure because I obviously didn't just bust one open and see what was inside. But I, I think the mixing balls are a little bit bigger on the second wave, which could be a pro or con, depending on you. I think it's a pro because it, it doesn't seem like it gets stuck up in the top of the nozzle as much. And here we have the final blue green, and I loved this green. It doesn't look like it goes on very well, and it doesn't for the first coat, but first coats are rarely ever important. The second and third coat, absolutely beautiful on this one. The upcoming picture will show you how vibrant it looks. I really loved this green. I see so many possibilities for it. And after this one, we go on to more of the regular green. They're kind of like a pukey greens, I guess you could say. They, they're probably my third favorite in the entire thing. This one's called Orchide. And as you see, this one actually goes on so well. It almost looks like I'm doing a second coat already. I really enjoyed these greens. I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot in this video. But as is with the first video, you got to start somewhere. Anyways, how are you guys doing this wonderful day or night or wherever it is, wherever you are? I really hope you are enjoying the video so far. It'd be really awesome if you dropped a like and left a comment to engage. You could subscribe or not. You should subscribe if you want to see more. But I, I more just want to make these videos to interact with people while I'm doing my hobby and just share my life with you guys. And here you see this green, honestly, very good. Anyways, I guess I should say a little bit more about me, I guess. Uh, my name's Hunter. I'm a intermediate painter, you could say. I do have a, a couple nice paintings well, not paintings, miniatures so far. And I, I got started in this hobby, oh, what was it, like a couple years ago? It was post-COVID, which is, it's really weird to say nowadays. It's, it's almost like a marker, you know, like you have AD and BC and now, now post-COVID. I, I always wonder if people in the future are gonna, gonna determine you know, dates based on that. And what happened was it was a little bit after COVID and there's not much to go do. Everyone remembers the lockdowns, at least if you were alive then. And me and a buddy were like, we were, we were playing a game called Total War Warhammer. Some of you have probably heard of it. A lot of you I'm sure have heard of it. And we were absolutely loving the lore, loving the game. And I decided, you know what, I'll check out this Warhammer stuff. You know, the game's fun, the lore seems interesting, let's check it out. So, I got into Warhammer. I got into Warhammer Fantasy, actually, not Age of Sigma or nothing wrong with Age of Sigma. I just enjoy fantasy better. Was listening to hundreds of lore videos every day while I'm at work, which, thankfully, I was one of the few people who did get to work during lockdowns. And I would just put on, like, podcasts and listen to people talk. And I just started to absolutely fall in love with the lore, you know? There's just something so magical about Warhammer's lore. And once I was done consuming all of that, going all the way up to the end times, I needed something else. So YouTube being YouTube told me about Warhammer 40k. And ugh, oh boy, did I bite that hook. I, I, I just sunk full in for it. I started watching every lore video. I was falling in love. I loved it, the ridiculousness, this, everything about it. And me and a buddy, which I'll keep his name out of it, but we decided, more, more me decided and me convincing him, we decided to pick up one of the kill teams. It was the, uh, into the dark, I think. It was the one with the orcs and veteran guardsmen. And he wanted the guardsmen because he really liked the idea of the guardsmen more as I was getting him more and more into it. And I love orcs. I absolutely love orcs. I love goblins. I love green boys. I love them all. And we decided to get the box. So I dropped the 
we got the starter one, which was like only a hundred bucks, I think. It just came with some basic terrain, the rules, and the, the 10 models. It wasn't any of the advanced stuff. And we get it, we start painting. I realized that I have to buy now brushes and paint and all this other stuff. And I was actually really dreading the painting part, if you could believe it or not. I, I almost wanted to just pay someone to paint it all for me just so I could play the game. Because I was only interested in playing the game at that point. But we decided we'll paint our own models, you know, have some fun, make, make some play dates out of it, you could say. And it just took off from there. I think the very first model I painted and... I'll probably show him one day was the little the little Gretchen the little guy from the box I decided you know what first model I'm not gonna paint up any of the big commandos or any of the guys who look really good I'll paint up this little dude learn how to put paint on a model which my new theory on that is when you start out model painting don't don't waste your time on GW stuff not that you shouldn't eventually get GW stuff I love GW stuff but just go out, go find a little nonchalant, little whatever model from your nearest local friendly game store and just paint up that. Get yourself a WizKids, get yourself something that's 5, 10, 20 bucks, a dragon, a little dude in suit and armor. Just get one of those and paint up that first. Learn how to put paint on the model and how to load up your brush and all these other techniques and then go out and get your expensive GW and I don't know a lot of other brands other than GW get their models and paint up those real nice I think you as a new painter if you are a new painter will enjoy the experience a lot more if you just do that anyways back to my story I guess I love to ramble and I feel like that's what a lot of these videos are going to be this is ending up to be less of a review and <laughs> more of a introduction rambling video, but that's a-okay. -okay. Anyways, winter rolls around and I kind of, I don't, I live in a somewhat cold place, so I can't really go out and prime. So I kind of just stopped painting for a little bit. I kind of, I don't, I wouldn't say fall out of the hobby because I was still and still do listen to lore videos and podcasts and I'm a hyper nerd when it comes to that stuff, so I just consume all of it. Uh, anyways, I fall out of the hobby a little bit, and we don't really play. Me, my, my buddy, I think, I think at that point, he was pretty busy with school, so we we didn't have enough time to really play or paint or hang out, and that was also lack of interest, you know. And then one day, it's summer rolls around, you're you're getting out of the the winter blues, and you just get that pet back in you, and I decide I'm gonna start painting again. So there's a little company, and I told you earlier I had a 3D printer. I absolutely love the thing, still do. I love 3D printing. I enjoy it almost as much as painting itself. It's just it's really fun to take this liquidy goo and turn it into a solid object it's just so fascinating but anyways i 3d print some models from a well-known company called uh one page rules oh and here we are into the reds uh, one page rules and they have a painting competition and i decide you know what i'm gonna enter you know why why the hell not it it's gonna help me get back into modeling and painting so I print out one of their like Griffin Rider Knights and I start painting them up. I enjoy the process and that's around the same time I got these Duncan Road paints and that was the wave one because wave two just recently came. I don't even know if there's many reviews on it out yet. I might be one of the first ones. Uh, anyways, I start painting up this Griffin Rider. I'm having a blast. I'm sharing pictures with my friends. And they're all telling me how good it looks and I enter and I sadly don't win which is fine because everyone else who entered that was absolutely wonderful and amazing and I really enjoyed their work but that really kicked me back into gear with painting again and I decided after that you know what let's start a YouTube channel let's have something to keep me motivated because that's one of the biggest issues with me is I I'll get into something and I, I kind of lose all motivation after a little bit. I, I don't know if it's some sort of 
ADHD or what you want to call it. So I, just, I decided to start this channel and well, here we are. This is the beginning of the journey and I hope to see you guys for a lot of years to come. And I'm going to apologize in advance for my release schedule. It's not going to be the best. <laughs> it's it's going to be very sporadic. I, I do have to work a full-time job. Well, mostly full-time. And it's it's going to be what it's going to be. This These videos are more of an archive of how I come along as a painter. And I just... I want to share my hobbying with you guys. Because I know there's people out there who want to see it. And I want to show it to you guys. If any of you have any sort of similar hobbying experiences, I'd love for you to drop them down in the comments below and maybe we can share this journey with each other, you know? Because one of the greatest things about this hobby is the sense of brotherhood you'd get out of everything. It feels like a lot of the people have nice things to say the entire time with everything you go on a lot of the reddits and whatnot and everyone's so nice and it it really warms my heart to see people come together over what let's be honest a lot of us don't paint very well and that's a-okay there's nothing wrong with having a bad painted midi you know i have my fair share of not nice painted minis even though i myself you could call a perfectionist. I really like to. I'm a. I'm a such a slow painter. My buddy, he paints fantastic models five times as fast as I can, and I'm just in awe at how he can do it. Cause I gotta sit there and just meticulously paint every little detail, and I hide. <laughs> I don't get it. But anyways, we're getting here near the end of the video. Last few coats of this wonderful pink range. I say wonderful, I'm I'm all over the place. I really do like it. It does look a bit like Pepto-Bismol, but it's it's been a journey, this first video. A lot of editing, a, a lot of talking, and hopefully, depending on how you guys like it, more or less rambling. Overall, I really enjoy this entire paint range, and I had a blast making this video, and I wanted to share it all with you, and I hope this journey continues on, and I just realized I don't know how to end this video, so I guess I'll rank this range. I'd give it a solid 8.5 out of 10. I think it's a very good range, I think, depending on how you can pick up in stores, because I'm in a place where going to a store and picking these up isn't readily available. I'm very out in the boons in the middle of nowhere America. But if you have access, I think getting these triads, and I'm pretty sure I was trying trifectas earlier in the video, and that is I don't think that's the word. I think it's triads. Picking up some of these, I, I highly suggest the blues and the teals and a couple of the greens. The pinks, if you enjoy that or have ideas with them, I currently don't. I'm sure they could do well with tongues and mouths and other things. But yeah, I'd say 8.5 out of 10. Pretty good. Uh, how else to end this video other than always remember to be kind, stay positive, and just paint.